Welcome to the Leronomics Show and today I'm with Edgar Perez, an expert on high frequency trading and also the author of The Speed Trader. Edgar, welcome to the show. Nice to meet you. Thank Great you to have you here. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, interestingly, now my background was initially in technology, but I kind of did my way around. I was working for different consulting firms, McKinsey, IBM, and then ended up then working for Citibank. Okay. But then after that, I saw that there was an evolution of technology going on. You see that trading no longer was actually managed by humans like you and me, mm. ordering and centering and ordering in the computer, but computers. Okay. And step by step, people realized that this was actually taking over the exchanges. So suddenly, in 2010, with a flash crash, everybody's talking, talking about this. Okay. So it was an interesting topic that actually led me into getting more informed about this, talking to meet people in the industry. Right. And finally, I really got so much into that that now I'm going around the world providing instruction in this topic. So it's high frequency trading, right? So tell us a bit about what that is. I mean, mm -hmm. in layman's term, you know. Mm -hmm. Think about computers. Basically, uh, Trading is an activity that has been conducted for thousands of years. Right. People buy, sell things. Right. So it's normal that you and I can talk and definitely trade about that. You yeah. ask me price, I can yeah. give you a price and so on. But at some moment, it becomes a little bit tough because sometimes the speed, the trading has to be faster. Mm -hmm. So obviously, we humans are slow sometimes. Sometimes maybe we are <laughs> definitely slow to recognize that price is changing so okay. fast. Okay. Or maybe that there's a market in other place where the price might change and might impact the trading that okay. you and I can so have. So this is the arbitrage and, and things right. like that. Right. So okay. therefore, there's an opportunity for me to be faster. And that's definitely much more efficient when computers are involved. Mm. And especially now when everything is interconnected. So what, what happens? A trader goes and programs... Uh, yes, the trader, let's say the quant working for a hedge fund or for a high frequency trading firm, they basically develop code and the code includes rules mm -hmm. to manage trading, to okay. find opportunities to trade and also to execute a trade. Okay. And so it's also the execution of the trade? Both parts, okay. right. So that will be included in a program that will be running all day depending on the markets is participating sometimes around the world. Mm. So the so same code hours, might be doing the same thing mm -hmm. all over and that can also be applied to any instrument. You might think about equities of course, commodities, anything commodities like derivatives, effect. So is this, is this big? I mean, is this phenomenon pretty big mm -hmm. now in the world? This phenomenon has been growing slowly but surely for the last, I would say, 10 years. Mm -hmm. But however, it was under the radar. Okay. <laughs> so I think the only thing that actually made it public was the flash crash in May 2010 okay. uh, when you saw a big decline in the Dow Jones that day. That actually kind of run a bell that there was something going on there. Okay. And then people realized, let's say in the US, in the equities markets, that si almost 60% of the trading in equities was already done by computers. Okay. People, something, did, most people don't realize that. But, but did the crash uh, indicate something negative or whether there's, there's govern? I mean, is that governance and well, who manages this whole area? Just the term flash crash okay. obviously had a relation to flash, which was actually a type of order that some traders used to use, okay. the flash orders. Okay. So that's how people associated a flash crash with high frequency trading. Mm -hmm. But you might have seen that later on, a few months after a flash crash, the SEC and the CFTC, which are the entity that right. regulate the equities yeah. and the commodities markets, they actually did some research on what happened that day. And they realized that indeed all these items about the flash crash were actually started by a mutual fund, by a yeah. typical long-term investor, and not by high frequency trading as was initially thought. Mm -hmm. So uh, still people think that that was caused by high frequency trading, but that's definitely proven that that has, was not the case. Of course, computers, as you know, yep. accelerate things. Yep. 20 years ago when you had Black Monday, also the markets went down for 10% mm -hmm. and the, the recovery took a month. Okay. This time with computers, the recovery took 20 minutes. Okay. So you've written this book, Speed Traders, right? And it's basically to share some secrets on, on speed trading or high frequency trading. Tell us a bit about this mm -hmm. book and what, 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 you know, what nuggets of wisdom that you can, mm -hmm. that we can glean from it. I think the book has uh, a couple of things that are very important. First of all, uh, it's a number of interviews uh, with people who are definitely running high frequency trading systems right now, even and in the US and successful. Europe, and being successful on that. They've been definitely featured not only in the book, of mm -hmm. course, but also in other media. And also the book provides a view of how technology is changing trading. Mm. Uh, people talk about high frequency trading as something esoteric, but it's not really. It's just the simple evolution of trading. Right. And whatever we call today high frequency trading, probably it's going to be low frequency trading in five years or ten years from now. So it's really an evolution that will not stop. So the book can give you insights on how these people got into high frequency trading mm. 
and also how technology is changing right. finance and trading and investing. So you talk a lot about technology and you have a background in technology. Is that a prerequisite to get into high frequency mm -hmm. trading? Yes, definitely high frequency trading relies in technology. As I mentioned to people, when you think about HFT or high frequency trading, the two main factors pushing this have been regulation mm -hmm. and also technology. Mm -hmm. Regulation because that gives you the opportunities yep. to create arbitrage. Yep. When you open the floor, let's say in the US in the equities markets, you only have NICE, yep. and then years later you have NASDAQ. Yep. Of course, it's only two markets to trade. And later on, you have now bad tra trading, you have also direct edge. So now there's a, f a, of a number of markets where you yeah. can trade, you can find arbitrage opportunities. So obviously, that was thanks to regulation. Of course, you still need technology, you still need communication, so, and that's something that is important for HFT, mm. because that's how people leverage that technology mm. to be faster, to find ways to minimize the latency, the time that it takes to complete an order. So obviously, technology plays a very important role, and that's why you see a lot of people graduating from these financial engineering programs or computer science programs with masters and PhDs going to work for funds that are running these strategies. Mm. And, and the reason is because you need to know programming, and you you need to be able to code instructions and so on and so forth, right? Interestingly enough, any person with a very high advanced degree working or studying f physics, chemistry, uh, economics, definitely they definitely have the background that is required to be able to identify patterns, mm. to be able to develop code, mm. and definitely that's something that people apply now in high frequency trading. But you know, if you talk about high frequency trading and, and the long term investors, uh, I, I think many long term investors kind of look down at uh, HFT. Um, and, and is, is that the reason, the, is the reason because when you look at a company or when you want to purchase shares in an organization, you're looking at long-term sustainability, whereas you are playing the whole arbitrage game. Right. Wouldn't time sort of, you know, kind of catch mm -hmm. up and that whole industry be collapsed? Mm -hmm. Well, not really, because if you look at the markets, the markets need to have a number of players that have different goals, different mm -hmm. horizons. Okay. Obviously, in the markets, you will have Warren Buffett a very uh, legendary investor who will yep. be continue successful yep. because he's buying companies. He's yes. looking at horizons of 10 years, 20, 20 years, years yeah, or, or more. Therefore, he's looking at that horizon. You have also retail investors like us who might be looking at retirement, college education, mm -hmm. and so on. And then you have high frequency traders who are basically looking at short term. So they might be trading in seconds, milliseconds, but it's a different time horizon. Therefore, they have different ways to evaluate mm. the prices of the instruments. Mm. So you have fundamental investors, you have technical investors, you have high frequency traders, combine these two things, and they all work in different time frames. Imagine if every player in the market gets to the same price. Mm. There wouldn't be a need for a market. Okay. You need to have different people who are looking at instruments in different ways, right. different horizons. So that's what makes a market more effective. Mm. And I think that the fact that you have different players will continue. Mm. The market has place for all of them. Long-term investors obviously are looking for investing in companies. Mm. High frequency traders are providing liquidity to the markets. So really everybody has a different role, different business model, different compensation uh, that I think interesting long-term investors wouldn't be interested in high-frequency trading and high-frequency traders enough. wouldn't be interested in long-term investing. Fair who are some of the giants in high-frequency trading I and mean, who are some of the great examples that you have? Mm -hmm. how, how have they been successful? Mm -hmm. Well, obviously the firms that have been the most successful were the ones who understood the impact of technology in trading. Okay. People who used to be floor traders in Chicago or in New York or in Amsterdam, they realized that that was the future. So they left the floor, mm. no longer were interested in that, and they invested in technology and they develop huge companies okay. nowadays that, let's say, Getco, Citadels, uh, that definitely they started with this field and now they decided to start doing high frequency trading. And, and do you have names to some of these traders? Mm -hmm. uh, well, if you look examples? at the book, yep. we definitely covered a number of them who have been very successful, obviously, who are very active in the press like my notion around for trade works, mm -hmm. Joe Nero from M3 Capital, people who are definitely very successful in this field, and they are interviewed in very detailed fashion in the book. Mm -hmm. So you can, by reading the book, The Speed Traders, you can definitely learn what they do and mm -hmm. also learn how they got into high frequency and why they continue doing that. Okay, and if somebody wants to get into this whole field, what are some pieces of advice or what steps should we well, be taking? Well, I think the key part here is definitely that you need to have an advanced degree that is going to be either in finance, economics, mm -hmm. or yeah, physics. And you say advanced meaning an MBA or something like uh, that? I would say more like a master's okay. uh, or a PhD. Okay. If you look at the because rosters, the coding. 
definitely that takes a lot of brain power and obviously people who have PhDs, definitely those advanced degrees, they have a great leg out to definitely go to work for these companies. Mm. Some of these companies are definitely the most difficult for us to get into because they actually combine different batteries of tests for people to apply. Mm. So definitely a great background in technology, a great advanced education uh, in a top university, definitely that's something that will be definitely very helpful to get the, a daughter there. Mm. And for some of our viewers, I mean younger people, who are out in the market, you know, how can they start to take baby steps to get into this whole high frequency trading game? Mm -hmm. uh, or do, do they have to get a broker? Or, I mean, how, how do you get involved in the game? Yes, many of the brokers actually provide you software that you can download, that you can use, and you can start playing with your own code. Mm -hmm. You can start, of course, programming, doing some code, trying to test that into different markets, and that will be something facilitated by brokers. Of course, if you want to go serious on this, you might be able to get into their programs, their platforms, mm -hmm. and start doing this in a f more effective fashion. But to be honest with you, high frequency trade, in a more, in a more simple sense, it's very not, it's not that expensive as it was in the past. If you're going to be the next get-go in the world, obviously there's going to be a long way to go there. There are going to be millions and millions of dollars in investment. But nevertheless, the basis can be applied and learned very cheaply. Yeah, you know, I, I'm very curious. I mean, you come from Peru, right? Uh, and currently you, you can do the salsa and the hustle. <laughs> and I mean, you've got a very uh, different, interesting background. Um, how do you, I mean, I, and, I, mean, I guess you, many people view you as a leader. I mean, wh what's your take in terms of, you know, your personally, you know, what's your goals in life and ultimately what do you hope to, uh, you know, achieve? In I think I would like to mention that obviously you're going to be successful only when you do what you really like to do. Mm. And obviously at the beginning, being a graduate from school, it's going to be difficult to identify what's going to be the field. So it's going to be fine for some people to go to different companies, right. to experiment different things, and to find what you really enjoy doing. And, and so once you, you find that... And this, you found what you really enjoy doing? I think I enjoy the fact that I'm able to speak with people in different parts of the world. Mm. I'm speaking about this new technology, and people definitely are interested in this. I like presenting to different audiences, and I present it all over the world. Mm. So I enjoy that part, and of course, that's actually what keeps me going. And for people who are young, fresh graduates, of course, identifying that key thing it's important realizing also you have to have fun and i think the salsa thing that you mentioned <laughs> helps me keep going too so you're here in kuala lumpur for a special conference that you organize you do this often uh, conferences yes we're running the speed traders workshop 2012 in different geographies i was a couple of weeks ago in korea uh, seoul and now in kuala lumpur running this workshop and then we're going to go also to uh, Warsaw, Kyiv, Beijing, Shanghai, and many other countries coming up. This is a trend that is expanding all over the world. Mm. In terms of high frequency trading, you will see that the participation is big in Europe, in uh, the US, in Japan, but there are many other markets that mm. also are also looking for that liquidity. Yep. Therefore, this is just expanding into geographies, new instruments, and I think that the demand is definitely very important for these markets. Fabulous. I'm looking forward to you becoming a global celebrity. In the, <laughs> and the Thank next you so much. I mean, I'm, I'm with Edgar Perez, who's the expert in high-frequency trading and the author of The Speed Trader. Edgar, thanks for, thanks for being on our Thank show. Thank you so much for inviting me.